Hello everyone, welcome back to Bone Pile Miniatures. Those of you who watch my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Reports will notice that our game club uses a set of rules that we call the Bone Pile Miniatures Mixed Rule Set. So I wanted to make a few videos where I explain what that rule set is. In a nutshell, they're basically our club rules or house rules. In a way, it's our version of the 9th edition of Warhammer Fantasy. So I don't need to remind anyone at this point that Games Workshop abandoned the world of Warhammer Fantasy with the 8th edition. And in the void, many fans have put together a 9th edition rule set to find ways to keep the game alive and to make some improvements to it. While I'm still a big fan of 8th edition Warhammer, I applaud the efforts of those who have written 9th editions. I'm in favor of whatever it takes to keep the game alive. And if nothing else, 9th edition games keep third party companies in the business of producing models which benefits all of us. So one of my favorite versions of the 9th edition of Warhammer Fantasy comes from the Warhammer Armies project and I've been following the Warhammer Armies project for quite a while and started following them back before they even had a 9th edition. And as a Bretonian player, I found them while I was hoping that Games Workshop would produce an 8th edition army book for the Bretonians. And that's when I stumbled upon Warhammer Armies project. However, despite being a longtime fan of the project, our club ended up not liking all the changes that they made to their version of the 9th edition. There were actually a few deal breakers for us, and to make a long story short, we decided instead of complaining about the things we didn't like, that we would just alter the rules to our liking and make our own version of it. And well, you know things didn't stop there. We also had many of our own ideas that we started to incorporate into the rule set. And so the Bone Pile Miniatures rule set is basically a three-legged stool of rules. The majority of it is still 8th edition rules, and then we have added parts from the Warhammer Armies project that we like. We haven't added all the changes that they implemented, and then we added many of our own ideas to the mix. So we've been using this mixed rule set for a few years now, and we feel pretty well settled with it. And our mixed rules have been typed up and printed, and they are the way we play the game in our club. Now the purpose of these videos is not to promote ourselves or our version of the 9th edition. It's just to inform people about our rules who are watching our battle reports to know what is going on. But if you would like to ask questions or make comments about our rule set, that's fine. Feel free to do so. And if you would like to look into these rules a little further, they're also published on our Warhammer blog, which is BonePileMiniatures.com. Just look for them under the Rule Supplement tab. And to be honest, if I were to play a Warhammer fantasy game with someone outside of our club, I'd prefer probably just to stick to the 8th edition rules 90% of the time. But within our club, we prefer this version of 9th edition. So let's get started going over the rules. I have broken up the discussion over more than one video in order to get through it in more manageable chunks. And this video will focus on the very basics, but then the next video will focus on the turn phases, and we'll go from there. So you are looking at the document that contains the basic rules. And this is written in a very short and concise wording format. All the type in black are rules that are taken straight from the 8th edition rulebook. But then the words that are in red are rules that have been changed from the 8th edition. And it doesn't really matter where the changes came from, whether they're from the Warhammer Armies project or from our own ideas, they are all still in red. So that way, if you are already familiar with the 8th edition, all you really need to do is look at the rules that are in red to get up to speed with what we're doing in our rule set. 
So in order to help these videos go a little faster, I'm going to mainly skim through the sections in black and focus mainly on the sections in red, which are the changes. So on this first page, almost everything is in black. The dice and the templates, the scatter, characteristic tests and leadership tests are all the same. The first section in red that we run into is this section on unit strength. And unit strength is an old concept that was in previous versions of Warhammer that was brought back into 9th edition by the Warhammer Armies Project. And it is easily one of my favorite 9th edition changes. So unit strength says the number of models times the basic unit strength of the models. See Army Detail Rules. And that's going to refer you to the different troop types to see what the basic unit strength is of each troop type. And then you multiply that basic strength by the number of models in the unit to get the unit strength. And that unit strength value is going to come up in other parts of the game and be referenced by other rules. So that's about it for that page. Nothing changes with line of sight. So on to the next page. So the next page is Game Preparation and Army Configuration. And I decided to put this section in with the basic rules, that way it could be in the front of the book, which is where I believe it should be placed, instead of at the back of the book. That's because I think the way you build your army should be in the front of the book. So under Army Configuration I have the line that says, One unit for every 500 points beyond characters. And that's an idea that I also got from the Warhammer Armies project. So one of the common complaints among fans of 9th edition rule sets is that the 8th edition too often turned into a game of one giant unit against another giant unit. And that strategy really seemed to undermine the point of the whole game. So this 500 point rule does not eliminate large units entirely you will just have to average out to one unit per 500 points. So if you do bring a large unit, it will have to average out with some smaller units in order to comply with this rule. And I think this rule is good. Like I said, it doesn't eliminate large units completely. You will just have to average them out with some smaller ones. There's definitely some appeal in going up against large units on occasion, just to see if you can beat them but there still needs to be some balance in your army in order to comply with this rule. And I think it's a really good idea. Okay, so let's move on to the next change. So core, special, and rare have the same army configuration as before. But when it comes to lords and heroes, it says up to 25% in either type, but not more than 35% combined. And that's another idea that I picked up from the Warhammer Armies project. And I think it's an excellent idea because this rule helps prevent the game from turning into character hammer, which is another issue that I think came up a lot in the 8th edition Warhammer. And then after that the next change shows up with the duplicates chart, which tells you how many duplicates you can have in your army depending on the size of your army, and has guidance for both special and rare troop choices. And once again, I copied that table from the Warhammer Armies project. So that's about it for that page. Rules for army alignments and allies are all the same. Oh, but there's one more change that's not in red. The Warhammer Armies project introduces a few more new armies that are not part of the 8th edition canon. And the army alignment paragraph explains where those armies fit into the Warhammer realm of allies. So let's move on to the next page now. And over here there's really not much to talk about. You can see there's a little change in the section of victory conditions. And here I added one of my own ideas. I decided to make an official provision for surrendering units. And this section describes how much those surrendered units are worth. And I have surrendering explained in a different section of the rules but here I have outlined what the surrendered units are worth. 
So it says, Surrendered, same as dead or fled, but only 50% of the cost of those models that surrendered. And I hope that's pretty straightforward. You score most of the unit as dead or fled, but the models that surrendered, however many there are, they're worth 50% of their cost. And my surrender rule will be explained in another section of the rule set, which is, I think, in the movement phase. So that's it for this section. There's a couple other notes in red under the battlefield heading, and those are just references to other rule supplements that I've put together. They're not really important for this particular video. One is for a reference to my landscape generator, which I've put together, and the other one is in reference to the weather and night rules supplement that I've also wrote. But those are not necessary at this time, and, and this rule set can be played without those two supplements. So I will cover those at some other point in the future. Now that's the last page of the basic rules chapter. And so I would like to encourage you to continue watching on my next video as I go into the turn phases. And that one's probably going to be one of my longer videos of this rule set series. But I hope to see you over there so we can pick up this discussion and continue this review of our rule set. I'd like to give you one quick summary of the changes that we reviewed in this video. Number one is the addition of the unit strength rule, which is an old rule from previous editions of Warhammer. Number two, some additional guidance on army configuration, specifically talking about the average unit sizes, also limits on lords and heroes, duplicate charts, and then finally to wrap up we have some additional guidance on victory conditions and points for surrendered units. And that's about it. Okay, so that will wrap up this video. And I hope to see you over at the next video where we will continue this discussion of the Bone Pile Miniatures Mixed Rule Set. See you over there.